Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord. Now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. It seems like we should go outside for baptism given this blessed rain event. O God of creation, eternal majesty, the preside, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Christ, who is our brother, with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let us be seated. reading from the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors <clears throat> when it burst out from the womb? <clears throat> when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, Thus far you shall come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Let us silently read the psalm. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships, and plied their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Then he spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. 
They mounted up to the heavens and fell back to the depths. Their hearts melted because of their peril. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper and quieted the waves of the sea. Then they were glad because of the calm, and he brought them to the harbor they were bound for. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the council of elders. Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On that day when the evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern asleep on the cushion and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. our loving, liberating, and life-giving God. Amen. Who is this that the wind and sea obey him? This is the beginning of the uh, first couple chapters of Mark's Gospel, and in that whole thing, Mark is asking these questions, because the early community after the resurrection, when the disciples and apostles are out there preaching what has happened, people are still trying to understand this. They're trying to get who is this Jesus? Yezu ben Yosef, Jesus, the son of Joseph of Nazareth. And they are trying to figure out how could he do these wondrous things because he's just a man. Later we have these lovely things called councils where we keep hammering it out. And even today, when we say the Nicene Creed, most of us are going, say what? But we're not on the side of time when the question was, who is this? We're on the side of time on a Sunday morning here in Cedar Rapids, 9 o'clock, out through the rain, donning masks because we sing, and, and 
are on the side of, this is Jesus. But to me, the question isn't, who is this who calms things? The question for us today is, who is this, and how does that change my life in a way when I'm in the world around me? Whether it's at the hospital, or the law firm, or at the school, or at the neighborhood grocery store, or right here, especially right here, who is this? And how does that matter in a way that makes the rest of the world go, who is that? The invitation on our part by the gift of the Spirit of Pentecost is to bring forth through our own lives the Spirit that has been poured into the world. That's where I love the story of Job, especially this passage. All right, you think you're all so smart? Gird it up. Who set the foundation? Where was the plumb line drawn? Can you even begin to fathom that the cosmos is still expanding? I mean, lay on the grass one night, look at the stars, hopefully we have power guard, you can do that, and just try and fathom an unending thing. We always end up putting it in a shoebox again. God can do more with us than we can imagine. So that's why I'm inviting us to be closely tied to continually understanding my own story in faith and our story in faith. And there have been plenty of times when I've been in the Job position. I remember Job is a good guy. He didn't question anything. And then, you know, as it goes, the, Satan came to visit God. And God says, look at my wonderful servant Job. And Satan says, give me a minute with him and he will curse you. And God says, no, sure, go ahead. You know, everything happens. The cattle are destroyed by the armies. A wind comes and shatters the house and kills all his kids and family. And Job goes into sackcloth and ashes and he's scraping his blister. And people come by and say, curse God! And he doesn't do it. But finally he's worn out and he says, how could you do this to me? And that's when this passage comes. Okay, gird it up. Let's talk about human freedom. Let's talk about the anthropology that I made you to be rejoicing in all that you're given. Let's talk about the resurrection experience when people no longer have to fear even death. Never mind taxes, <laughs> never mind mortgage payments, never mind your son parking the car into a tree, never mind any, even death has no claim on you. So how then are you going to live life fully? When I was in the novitiate, when I was joining the religious community, back when Noah and I got off the ark in 1984, I had a very hard time coming up to Easter and thinking, I can't stay in this. And my spiritual director was very good and said, why don't you sit with the passage? Sit with the, with the uh, resurrection passage. And I did. And what came to me was, the piece where Mary Magdalene is sitting outside the tomb, crying. And somebody said, you know, why have you, why are you here? And she said, sir, where else would I go? And that resonated to me. Because I've always felt God with me. I've never felt alone. I've been alone. I've been lonely. But I've never been alone in terms of life in general. The, I feel God's spirit all the time. Most of the time I'm paying attention to it. And I realize that's why I'm here. I think this gospel is something to say to all of us that can impact the world so that real things get done so people are out of poverty, have equitable justice, have access to vaccines across the globe, and that we will fight our own inner prejudice to get that accomplished. Because that's what the spirit will do for us. And I've had to ride that pony a few times because I get frail. But when I lean back into the trust I have in God, I suddenly see things we can do beyond belief. My invitation is to ask each of us to seriously walk with our own story about faith. And continually do that because that's what I call formation. It's not a once and done thing. It's not once you've been sprinkled with baptism. Over. It's something we must exercise again and again 
so that we stay fresh in our ability to proclaim that same spirit to the world around us. And I think the world around us would welcome, you know, the little, <laughs> the end of the Job story. When after Job and God have a conversation, and Job bows down and says, I was a fool, and everything he had is completely restored. <clears throat> now, I, I, we can tear that apart a little some other time, but I think each time we go back through one of those experiences and we come back to God, I hope you're engaged in encountering a God who's even more present with you and you're more present with God. That's the powerful dynamic of the Spirit. That's what Jesus is showing his disciples. He's sleeping on the back cushion because he's not worried. We're going to make it. Nothing's got power over it. But the disciples were scared. We just came out of an exile. Were we not scared? How do we come back into things with kindness and yet great learning? So I invite us to lean into our story and let us refresh the story of this place in this time as a center, as a community, as a, a people proclaiming the life-saving gifts of God's Spirit where we are. Standing as you are able, let us read softly the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. God of peace, in the storms of life, you call us to trust in your power of peace over chaos and give us courage to face your mission in the name of your Son. We praise your name. For the earth in its beauty, we praise your name. For the wisdom and commitment of leaders, we praise your name. For those with birthdays, Daniel, Dale, Jerry, Susan, Carl, Michelle, Randy, and Sean, we praise your name. For those with wedding anniversaries, Diane and Herm, Jim, Doug, Randy and Nancy, and Eric and Carrie, we praise your name. You are the source of solace in every need for those who are sick or injured. Sean, Vic, Joanne, Sally, Cynthia, Darlin, Marion, David, Carol, Corinne, Ryan, Judy, Bob, Beckett, Lars Jr., Gary, Janet, Nancy, Mary, Susan, Cloyd, Haley, Linda, Joe, Patty, Mark, Mary, Fritz, Jim, Jan, Sienna, John, Daryl, Doug, Diane, Anne, Susie, Chris, and Michelle, and for all those in continuing care. Lord, hear our prayer. Give us the will to be bringers of peace in the world 
and preachers of God's reign where all benefit each other and none is left out. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and those who mourn, especially the family of Ann Gertz. Lord, hear our prayer. Give your grace to all we name before you. Lord, hear our prayer.
our live stream just missed the announcement. So we thank Kate, we thank Ellen, and we are hoping for changes here. No coffee hour due to the rain. Okay. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our joy to praise and thank you, Lord God, because you called your chosen people to be faithful in the face of difficulty and death. You equipped them with appreciation and wisdom and faithfulness for your creation. Even when your children forgot your will and sought to become controllers of the earth, you recalled them to their creator and raised up among them a son of David to face the threat of sin and death with your word and truth alone. And still today we call your church always from the threats and temptations of power to the risk and wonder of being remade to be the image of Jesus. And so with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we join in their ending hymn of praise. Faithful God, in Christ you speak to us amid the storm of our fear and dwell with us when our faith is weak. You are with us even when a compan we companion, excuse me, when we complain about our peril and doubt our destiny. Come upon your church today in the power of your spirit that your people may be reborn as children of hope and courage and endurance. Send that same spirit upon this bread and cup that they may be, that we may find them to be the joy of our, your presence and they may be to us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again he gave you thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Sustaining God, inspire all who you call to serve you and to realize that now is the day of salvation. Infuse your church with purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, and genuine love. When we, your disciples, face affliction, hardships, calamities, imprisonment, and hunger, make us possessors of all good things and use them to your good purpose until that day when dishonor and distrust and death are no more and your, son, and your spirit fills your creation with the glory of your risen Son, Eternal Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us bow our heads and pray God's blessing. In the still of the night, you give us quiet and strength. In the light of day, you give us courage and hope. Let us receive this sacrament, go forth into the world as bread for the hungry and dirt drink for the thirsty. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and reign with you now and forever. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.